Hello and welcome to MM Design or mm, Design. Today is a very special day because the trends of spring summer 2023 fashion clothing edition. So basically like the one thing that actually matters. Hi, my name is Maria. If you're here for the first time, I do a bunch of trend reports for every single season, break up all of the fashion shows into tiny little pieces, take a look at the bags, take a look at the shoes, at the colors, at basically everything. And now it's time for the actual like major big trends if you know what I mean. I'm gonna skip all of the follow, like, and share because I'll talk about it some more a little bit later in the video, let's face it. Let's just dive right in and start a little bit in a safe category, something super wearable, something that is easily like introduced into your wardrobes, and then start to build up from there. And at the end, you guys, it's going to be crazy trends. Like, <laughs> you just have to wait and see. Okay. So let's get started by talking about the utility trend. So we have lots of pockets on pants, like very baggy utilitarian pants, maybe something like a cargo pant or parachute pant. So very long pants coming, kind of going like all the way to the ground with a lot of side pockets, a lot of seams, like the pockets even add extra volume to the outfits themselves. We also have not just the pants, but maybe like them on the skirts or maybe on the jackets. Miu Miu has those bags that were kind of with very large pockets, even like jackets with those. We also have this in Louis Vuitton of having like a two-piece set with large outrageous pockets uh, we also have it in more of a classy version with like satin and silky very very smooth and shiny fabrics but with pockets still we also have that going into maybe a camouflage print or in like other colors as well. The way that they were paired was completely different depending on the show. Some shows wanted to like class it up a little bit while others just continued into that sporty vibe, maybe with just like a sports bra or maybe a mesh top of some sort. This trend is of course is okay for both men and women as I am now saying this, you guys, this video is for everybody. If you're a guy watching this, like, yes, I know I'm including a lot of female models here, but right now the trends are so unisex that if you're a guy, just look at what the female models are wearing and just take inspiration. Think about how you could change that and make it into like a masculine outfit. If you're into that, maybe you're not so much into that and you just like the, the feminine style anyways okay back to the pants and the pockets we as women can relate to the fact that we don't have enough pockets you guys but to this time around we have so many different items of clothing that have pockets and it's so refreshing this is maybe a third season in a row that we see a lot of pockets on the runways and you guys, we have so many pockets that Fendi decided to put them on hats and on like these weird socks things and on gloves. Pockets are everywhere. Now we just need to figure out what to fill them with. My bet is on candy. That's like the first thing that comes to mind, but just make sure to take it out of the pocket before you wash them. So we even have like little bralettes with the pockets on the boobage. Yes, that is how popular it is. It is pretty crazy, but it, it is here, you know? All right, you guys, let's move on to the next trend. And it's hoods, like hooded. I know, okay, hoodies, sure, yeah, okay. It's psh, plain and easy, but no, more like classy dresses with hoods. This really reminds me of Grace Jones, like the black, beautiful model singer actress she always like for some reason in my mind i always imagine her in a hood so this is the look versace had plenty of looks with the hood it was either just a top or maybe like a mini dress with a plunging neckline with the hood we also have it in 
so many other shows like Philosophy. If Saint Laurent was basically like 50% of the looks had hoods related and they're beautiful, very long silhouettes, like maxi dresses with the hoods uh, paired with really long coats, just so breathtaking. And of course, just like a regular hooded item as well, nothing too crazy. We also have off-white with that interesting knitted kind of a balaclava that turns into sleeves or like the entire outfit. So I'm guessing that's why I have included it here, just because it's not very a hood, but it's still not a separate hat. So yeah, that's, that's why they're here. But lots of very nice long silhouettes with that look for sure. All right, let's get into the next trend, and it is biker jackets. So we have like the classic biker see in Alexander McQueen here. It is so classic. I'm pretty sure almost everybody has it on in their closet already, but maybe go like up a size or two. Like here in Yves Saint Laurent, we have like really strong shoulder looks. Here in Chloe and Gucci, it's a little bit of a different vibe. And we're also going into a different, not so classic, more on like a sporty side of a biker jacket as well. We kind of like have all the transition jackets, I'm telling you. Like those really sporty ones where you have like inserts of like protective gear <laughs> in them, if you know what I mean. So we have plenty of those, like in David Coma show right here. We have them just plain black ones or maybe with some design on them. So if you have a boyfriend who is into motorcycles, I'm pretty sure you'll like pull off. We also have some deconstructed items from Diesel here. I don't know if that's a super wearable look, but it wasn't only made out of leather. We also have this in denim and some other fabrics and different colors as well. Even we have those inspired pants like that in one of the shows. All right, next one up is basically the wife beater shirt. We've seen this already in the previous season and I feel like this is such a refreshing shirt to wear instead of like a classic white tee. This is perfect, really easy to style and really would elevate your style to be much more current if you just make that little substitution from white t-shirt into that wife beater. It doesn't have to be white, it can be different colors, it can have some interesting neckline or it can have like some cutouts. Uh, you can see here it is so easily styled even with like long skirts like here or maybe just like a pair of denims and Yes, so another thing that I've seen a lot of on the runways and on the streets were vests and just wearing them without anything underneath. Like I've seen a lot of like off-duty models wearing this kind of a, a look and it is very chic, very easy. I feel like it's very classical as well. So if you'd want to invest into a vest and then maybe pair it with something underneath later, I think it's a pretty good idea. All right, next one up are like super duper long sleeves. I don't know how wearable this trend is, but we've already seen this maybe in like three years back. So maybe this is a little bit of a fab for all those like super duper trendy people out there. I don't know if I'll be following this, I'm pretty bad with the sleeves. But you can see here it's basically like in any uh, kind of an clothing item we see super duper long sleeves in shirts, in dresses, even like in blazers. Um, and they can be just straight or maybe a little bit flared out. Okay, next one up is very long coats, like almost to the floor coats. I've heard somewhere that whenever a recession happens, those long coats return to be trendy things. Why? Because probably people are like, oh, you have money for a lot of material. <laughs> and 
I guess that's how it goes. <laughs> so really long coats, doesn't really matter like what color or what texture, what material it was made from, but as long as it's very long, as long as it's like almost touching the ground, it's gonna make a statement for sure. Like this Y Project one, so amazing. It has a print on it of a body. I just love that trend, so I'm just gonna point that out. <laughs> just think about when you're wearing this, how was the weather like? Is it reaching the paddles? What is your heel situation? Because sometimes if you're um, trying things on with a heel, it's gonna look a little bit different than when you're wearing just regular flats and maybe it's gonna be dragging along the stairs or the floor. Like here we have Yves Saint Laurent with amazing, beautiful, like straight line silhouettes but those coats are so incredibly long that I don't know how anybody is going to function in real life. You, you can see the models there, their coats are already wet. Also, we have this in off-white, so, so minimalistic, so cool. I really love this trend. All right, let's get into the next trend. And it's another somewhat wearable one. <laughs> Never mind. It's sheer. <laughs> so, uh, well, as long as it's summer, it's, I think it could be wearable if you're kind of like wearing it as a little cover up for a bathing suit, maybe, or maybe you are having it as one of the layers. There was lots of sheer moments on the runways. I don't know how comfortable you would be to be without a bra with this sheer trend. But here in Dolce Gabbana, I love how it's being styled with very nice lingerie that is very covering and just having that top layer have being transparent. That is actually one of the major, major trends of having your underwear seen through either just having underwear on, which we'll get into a little bit later, or having it being seen through the skirt, or maybe it being seen through a dress, like here you can see, <laughs> you can see it in Miu Miu for sure, there's like a lot of it. Here we go, N21, so many examples of like, just a sheer dress on top of a pair of underwear. Yes, we have this in dresses, we have it even in coats, we have it in kind of a more of a plastic even version. But anyways, let's get into the next one. So it's a kind of a nightgown or like a slip dress where we have maybe it's like silky with a little bit of lace. Maybe it's just a silky thing that is there. I remember we had this trend, but for a more of a classical slip. Here we have some reconstruction of it. Maybe it has a unique neckline. Maybe it's like super long. Maybe it's sheer. Maybe it's like out of two pieces or maybe Maybe it's worn differently or even the worn with a pair of pants just something that is very nice that falls on your body well and yeah okay so another trend that could be a little bit of a substitution for like a really regular dress that you go to like a fancy event to is a cat suit we have plenty of those on the runways we have them from like more casual ones to more classy ones to like bedazzled ones even <laughs> like something that beyonce would wear on the runways something maybe with like a little bit of cutouts uh, or something a little bit more voluminous than we are used to so we do see some suit onesies on the runways this is something new for me so if just make a mental note it is there. Stella McCartney was one of the designers that had that. Oh, we also have this in Alexander McQueen. I don't know. I feel like it would be very difficult to find something affordable. I think it should be like very fitted to you, tailored even. Once again, we see this being paired with maybe a very long coat or just like a heels, of course, if you're into that kind of a thing. Maybe you're, you, you could even do like a head to toe almost look like we've seen in Alexander McQueen where you were like, are the shoes part of this cat suit outfit? I don't know. 
All right, the next trend is the fringe. I know I'm like talking about the textures that I've already covered a little bit here, but I decided to do it here because uh, let's face it, nobody watches my textured video. <laughs> but it's good, you guys. In, in order to understand the entire look of what's good, what's trendy, what is in, what is now, what is current, you need to understand the entire scenario. So that's colors, that's texture, that's pattern, that is little details like accessories, bags, shoes, blah, 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 blah. So make sure to watch it. But here you see that there's lots of outfits, lots of skirts with long fringe. Maybe it's just like a little detail on the top. Maybe it is on the bag. Maybe it is on the shoes, on the dress, on the pants, on the bag again. <laughs> yes, this Victoria Beckham French bags are so good, so yummy. I feel like if I would have had one, I'll be just like petting it all, all day long and trying to like brush it out. I would have a little brush for it in my bag. Yes, I would. Anyways, let's go into the gender bender. <laughs> so, what I mean by that is we see so many gender bending fashion trends uh, where either females wear super masculine clothes, which is like it's been a while since we did that. But now we all see more male wearing more feminine clothes like here uh, we have corsets on guys or like more of a lower rise, maybe something shiny, sparkly. We see a lot of skirts on men as well on the runways. It's just this trend of putting male models sometimes in female garments. Like in Blue Marine here, we have very feminine a bell bottom pants with like this very feminine sleeve. In Burberry, we have guys with being styled in skirts and pants. And okay, well, here we are. We are entering the skirt and pants section. So yes, we see a lot of either like dresses paired with pants or maybe skirts paired with pants and being worn by both men and women. Usually the pants are a little bit voluminous. Here is a beautiful representation of from Blue Marine of having like similar colors and it's just looking very flowy with like most of the volume at the very bottom of the outfit. We also see them being paired with maybe like a net over it, but then also like a really long shirt that kind of opens up and into not even a skirt, but you can see here Sport Max having a bottom up shirt that is super long, but then the bottom of it is open so you can see the pant and it's just walking, creating volume with that skirt back there, or even having like this weird tail thing situation, which we will take a look in just a little bit. All right, let's see what we have next. We have this look in Versace. We also have it in Eula Johnson. We also have this look in rock, in Y Studios, Fendi as well. It is a little bit of that awkward uh, Y2K trend that I really don't want to see. Again, remember those like style denim with like this weird dress on top? This time around, it's much more sophisticated, much more beautiful and yes. All right, next trend is a maxi trend. So we have a lot of maxi skirts, so we have a lot of maxi dresses, something really long, very long silhouette creating. There can be either very flowy or maybe very tight, but still creating the volume during the movement like we see here. And it could be both very sporty as well as very fancy and uh, extravagant slit there as well. Fendi also having like a slit all the way almost to the crotch but like not in the center uh, on the side it's pretty good. Yeah and the skirts can be as I mentioned either like straight line or a little bit of a mermaid style having more volume to the very bottom like a trumpet skirt 
We've seen this in Fendi and in a few other shows. And the placement of the skirt could be either way. Like right now, we've seen a lot of low rise happening on the runways. So if your body is liking this trend, then go ahead. I'm gonna be keeping my waistline at the waistline just because that is what works for my body and I love it like that. So I'm not going to be experimenting with the whole low rise trend, not this time. No, 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 thank you. One thing that I've noticed that it looked, there was a lot of skirts that were made like almost out of pants. So maybe like a pair of denim where you would remake into a skirt. We see this in so many shows and on so many fashion influencer feeds that I've already created two skirts like this out of my two pairs of pants that did not fit me right. And I love it. People always ask me where did I get that? And I'm like, I made it. <laughs> if you were wondering of getting yourself a skirt like this, think to yourself, maybe I have a pair of pants that I no longer fit and I could make it into a skirt. Just because pants are using more material than a skirt, just because it needs to go like around the leg, into the crotch area. So whenever you undo those seams, it gives you a little bit extra material. As long as you can fit into the waistline, you are good. Like my butt has grown a lot, so that was my problem. <laughs> But here in the Y project, you see like it's even like very not well fitted at all. <laughs> and here in Balenciaga, you can definitely see that that skirt used to be a pair of pants. <laughs> if you're enjoying this content so far and you like to support me and my page, all you need to do is like this video, maybe leave me a nice little comment down below. And if you're not already subscribed, please do so. And if you're a superstar, then you can also share it. Thank you. All right, as I mentioned the denim, this is our next trend. We have a lot of denim. You might have noticed in the beginning of the video, I'm wearing of somewhat of a Canadian tuxedo myself. I am a Canadian, and this is what we need to wear at least once a week to be Canadian. Yes, it is in the rules. Yes, I am joking. All right, so we see very different denims, but usually, there, the color of the denim is paired nicely. I love denim. I feel like it's the most wearable thing out there. So I cannot complain. As I mentioned, the Canadian tuxedo where the entire outfit is denim. We also have some mixed matches of denim and then not so denim outfits. Uh, in Y Studios, there was even some printed denim on non-denim. <laughs> We have some cropped jackets in denim. We have skirts in denim. And yeah, let's get into pants. Okay, so for pants, I know that I'm like bombarded with so many uh, non-trends. Like, oh yes, you're wearing skinny jeans. Oh no, you're not trendy. But yeah not too many skinny jeans on the runways unfortunately if you love that uh, but there's a lot of voluminous pants once again either being a low rise or a high rise or a mid rise doesn't really matter as long as they're voluminous we have this trend being covered on all of the runways and it's just up to you on the the rise of the pant, whatever speaks to your body the best. As I mentioned before, the cargo pants and the utility trend, where they also had a lot of volume in the pants. If you guys are afraid of wearing very voluminous pants, just thinking that you might lose yourself in all that volume, pick a very tiny top and that will save you. And that works all the, all, also the other way around. If you have a very voluminous top, go for a smaller, tighter bottom. But here we go, we're talking about pants here, so here we are. I prefer to have my waistline on the waistline, just so my legs look longer, but if you have a very super duper long legs and a short torso, then to even your body out, you might go for a lower rise. 
So it's completely up to every single body is so different and I cannot tell you what to wear, honestly, because it might not be for you. Acne Studios even had like a pant that started at the boobs. Yes, yes, we've seen that trend in the previous season. Not too many this time, I think I only seen two of those looks on the runways, but here we are. Were the wide pants the only pants on the runways? No, there weren't. We also seen some bell buttons, especially a lot of those in blue marine, so a little bit more of the Y2K trend that I will be covering a little bit later. But yeah, let's head into a very special trend. Something that is a little bit crazy. It's the exaggerated hips. So I'm pretty sure that we've all seen the show Bridgerton. Yeah, new season, big hips. You guys, fashion is not isolated. It's always connected to something. Maybe there is a new movie out, maybe there is a show out, maybe there is a book out, maybe, I don't know, like some kind of a musical, and it is all connected. So the hips, the extra large, even like a, a net underneath hips. Yes, we've seen those too, super exaggerated ones. Like you, you guys are saying, this is not wearable in real life, and it might not be. But in just a little bit, I will show you some examples of how you can be a little bit more personalized. Because I don't think many of us will be able to go to Louis Vuitton shop and buy ourselves these weird, exaggerated hips outfits. It's not in everybody's budgets, and it's such an odd trend that it just might be for the red carpet like we have these dresses in low eve like who is going to wear this in real life pretty much nobody yes there will be looks like this on the red carpet for some kind of super fancy show maybe this is not something that is wearable to an average person but how can we change that. So what we could do, pick out instead of like an oversized blazer, would go for a blazer that's still pretty large but has a very small waistline. Maybe the item would have a peplum design. Peplum is like a little thing on the waistline going down that adds a little bit extra volume on the hips. So this trend would be perfect for somebody who doesn't have large hips, maybe like a reverse triangle. We also could go for like a bubble dress where there is a lot of volume just at the hips of the skirt. We also see this like in Acne Studios in a share moment. I feel like this is a really cool thing to think about. Uh, but I know, I, I like who, who has the time or the finances to buy this? I don't know. We also see this in Balma, but like in straw format where there was like built on hips. Also like even like corseted hips like this as well. Miu Miu, another interesting way of trying to do that is with large pockets, you guys. Like, look at those pockets, they're humongous. Even like a bag there. We could also just have it a short skirt that is very voluminous, or maybe just like a little accent on the hips here and there. Victoria Beckham has a very subtle dress like this. Another thing that happens like from the movie into the trends is the mermaid core. So we have the little mermaid that came out and everybody's going crazy over it. So we have lots of shells, lots of like maybe sleek wet hair looks. We also have maybe like a mermaid style skirts or bell bottom pants as well. Something very ocean mermaid like. Also another example of that will be the Barbie core of having very uh, preppy looks, something super blonde with bright colors and very Barbie-like styling. I should definitely get my girlfriends together and just dress up as a Barbie and go see the movie. <laughs> I think that would be so much fun. 
let's head to the Y2K. I know that I've mentioned already a few times during this video about the Y2K trend, but here we are. We have it continuing. I know that this is not the first time you see this trend, you guys, and I hope this is the last. <laughs> Honestly, living through this the second time is not great. Anyways, we have very deep plunging necklines, we have very low rise everything. What else is there for Y2K? I'm not the biggest fan of the low rise at all. It just divides your body weirdly, usually like a, a good rule to follow where you have even like high-waisted something and crop top where you have one third is at the top or like a very long shirt that's almost to the knee and just like a little bit of pant leg seen. That's the third at the bottom. Having it like cut off right in the middle, usually not the best look. But once again, different bodies, different looks. Maybe you really like that kind of a style and I cannot tell you not to wear this. We also have some major attention on the hips with some accessories like little belts or maybe even like the pants are made that way. Oh, once again, we have the plunging, like very water-esque situation happening in a few shows like Blue Marine as well as Versace. But let's head into another trend of the Y2K and that is a micro mini skirt. Yes, mini skirts are here. I probably will not be doing this trend just because I have chafing issues. And if I cannot wear a pair of shorts underneath the skirt, it is not long enough for me. And also with a mini micro skirts, they kind of just draw this line in the middle of your body. That is not the most flattering, but it is completely up to you. Like if your body allows for it, go ahead. And if it doesn't allow for it, but you're still feeling confident and sexy in it, then go right ahead. There is nobody here to judge you guys. But anyways, we have this not only in skirts, but in dress formats as well. Uh, so that is a little bit better just because there is no like too many lines like across the body. If I were to go and do this trend, I would probably go for something like this, where there is a slit in the skirt and that makes it a little bit less linear across the body. So it has like a little bit of length that the leg gives but that's just me. Maybe I would have like something on my other leg not to have any chafing. Yeah, that's actually not a good idea. In Diesel, we have a belt. Let's face it, this is an oversized belt as a mini skirt. And I don't know, I've seen a few videos of reviewing these belts, skirts, and they're like a thousand dollars, you guys. They are not playing around. And it's, it's like they're saying that it's impossible to sit in it's impossible to like walk in. Uh, some decided to wear it as a top instead because it's like a little bit more wearable. But I don't know, it's like a thousand dollars for this. Good for Diesel, good job you guys. You have pulled through and are part of the big boys now. But honestly, no, that's just, that's not, that's not me. That's not my vibe. But if it's your vibe, go ahead. I'll just be jealous of your non-chafing thighs. <laughs> but I do really enjoy uh, like an etro here where they have kind of it acting not as just a skirt but like an over skirt on top of this oversized shirt. I would definitely wear something like this. I feel like it's really cool and yes. Anyways, up going from that trend we have the micro shorts but they're not really called micro shorts, right? They're like hot pants or something, which is basically underwear, but in a not so underwear material. And yeah, we either have just them on their own or maybe just having a fancy underwear to have something paired with like a sheer item on top. We have this, like in Mugler, they even have like a pair of denim 
that is like the just regular jeans but they have that underwear extra thing happening if you know what i mean so we have those hot pants in a few shows like in Caperni show we also have that in uh dolce gabbana as once again paired with maybe like a pair of tights or maybe just having it underneath the clothing why studios here denim underwear you guys i don't know if i would ever do that diesel as well like are those are not shorts those are underwear we have also this in low eve and a few outfits i don't know would you guys ever wear this type of underwear shorts maybe i'm just like so old-fashioned that is just not even funny anymore <laughs> anyways let's get into the next one so we have these like long tails and maybe skirt or maybe the dress is high low kind of a dress where there is a, like really high at the front and very low at the bottom so not very uniform cut cutting or like here in Acne Studios and will be featured in many many more shows it's like a mini skirt with maybe like a little tail there I couldn't find the proper word for it but I'm pretty sure you guys understand what I'm talking about Giacomo's here as well having it even like dragging on the floor we have a lot of this this I kind of like I don't know it just gives that eye to follow down into the ground it's not abrupting like if it's a mini skirt it's not just there it's kind of like having this more interesting thing happening this is also like in dresses like in blue marine here we also have this in victoria beckham uh, sometimes it doesn't even have to be mini skirt maybe like a knee long skirt but then having the back much much longer almost like a cape fur skirt but not really we also have that kind of a situation with like a pair of shorts like here in Dior and having like very long over skirt on top or maybe it's part of the top itself maybe it's like a very long shirt that has been unbuttoned all the way to the waistline from the bottom if you know if you're like following my idea we have it in a lot of shows and I really like this idea of where it's like a little bit hot maybe outside and you wanted to wear a pair of shorts but then you don't want to be like overly open then you just have this little tail thing you feel comfortable you feel not super hot I mean like in temperature wise not in self-esteem uh, and you can still cover up if you're not comfortable just do like a little oops okay i'm gonna show only one leg now or two legs you know this is definitely something that i would do if i wore this kind of short shorts we see this on like a side or maybe the back having like this long tail on the ground how wearable is the long tail on the ground? I don't know, but something that is just there adds interest, adds that length to you as well. And once again, it doesn't have to be super fancy. It can be also very casual, like here, juicy DC. Mush also having it very sporty. Uh, I'm not sure about the bra though. Keep some more coverage there. All right, I mentioned the capes for the skirts, but we also have capes for the dresses. You guys, I love cape. I feel like it's such a statement. Maybe it's just because of the coronation. I don't know, but there's capes. <gasps> Ooh, maybe it's because of Bridgerton. I don't know, is there lots of capes? Now I need to watch it again. <laughs> but a lot of capes on the runways. It's, it might be either just like part of a sweater even like here we see like I think it's like another sweater on top of a sweater but it's usually part of a dress or just like an, a little accessory on top of everything else I think it's such a beautiful such an elegant such a feminine addition and I love it it's, it's drama as well you know and I'm here for it I love it I have one dress 
with a cape and I like it. I have two capes that I need to be wearing more. I'm like every single season, I'm like, I need to start wearing capes and this is the time I'm going to do it. Are you with me? Okay, let's make a club with capes and be superheroes. All right, so I'm just gonna tell you what kind of blazers were out there on the runways. Usually they were oversized. Once again, we are wearing oversized blazers. If you guys purchased a lot of oversized blazers, you're good to wear them still. I know that I have. I have such a huge collection of them now. Every time I go to a thrift store, I go to the men's section and I'm going out with a new blazer. <laughs> Either for like an upcycle or just to wear it on its own. Or I sometimes steal my husband's. So blazers, lots of very oversized blazers uh, maybe there's something unique to it as in like it's so sewn something to sewn on or maybe it's like distressed in some kind of way maybe it has some cutouts or some hands holding cherries or a big huge eye are we in lord of the rings i don't know anyways so we have these very large oversized blazers. Sometimes they're paired with like kind of the same voluminous pant. In this case, I would wear something very tiny at the bottom, maybe like a bralette or something super small, just because, just to kind of have that play on volumes and sizes as well. Like here in Miu Miu, you can't even see the rest of the outfit. It's all being covered by the blazer. We also have them being paired with something very feminine, like a little nice dress, or just the whole outfit is just a suit. <laughs> Maybe even paired with like shorts. And yes, are all of the examples oversized? No, but that is what I'm gonna show you the most of, just because probably I was looking for them. <laughs> But as I mentioned before, we do have the accent on the waistline, just from the hip thing, uh, where we do have a little bit on a bigger side, but still having that silhouette of an hourglass in the few shows. Here are a few examples. And if you guys weren't crazy and bought a bunch of blazers and decided to crop them, they're here as well. So continue wearing them. Next trend, cutouts. We seen cutouts for a few seasons now as well. Nothing crazy new. We have them being present in majority of the shows, either having like a small cutout somewhere, maybe asymmetrical cutout as well. We also have this like in whatever people are wearing. Sometimes it's a cat suit, sometimes it's a shirt, pants, skirts, you name it. Alexander McQueen had a few beautiful dresses with the cutout situation. We also have them in Valentino, J.W. Anderson, Tom Ford having that hourglass thing. So whenever there's a cutouts right on the either side of the belly button, then it gives you like the illusion of an hourglass shape and it's very flattering if anybody wanted to try it out. Off-White had a really interesting of like just the belly cutout. I don't know if that is a look I'm going for, but it is definitely a unique look. We also have like maybe asymmetrical dress with the cutout on only one side. I love Dion Lee's cutouts. They really remind me of these large plants with like holes on them. They're really really cool here they're pretty symmetrical but i don't know i just yeah i love them so much david coma as well having cutouts in a few different ways some very symmetrical some more organic cutouts with a little like trim here we can see even like sweater having these arm holes which is actually really cool. You can even like put your arm through the hole instead of the regular hole, if you know what I mean. <laughs> we also have some more classy dresses with cutouts and like belly buttons all around. Stunning dresses in Roberta Cavallini's show. Like, oh my goodness, those silky ones. With, oh yes, I'm like, mm, 
I'm getting hungry now. I don't know why fashion makes me hungry. This is not supposed to be working this way. Anyways, we also have some asymmetric kind of like diagonal cutouts in Caperni as well as in Courageous as well as in some other shows and more like a strappy looks as well like we've seen this in Ultra Zara and as well as in Balenciaga and as well as in Balma of maybe like super asymmetry but also symmetric ones as well. All right the next one is the deconstructed trend. So when I say deconstructed here, you can see in Giacomo's, it looks like something, somebody just cut off a pair of pants and then attached it to another one. Or maybe here, it looks like this was made out of different biker jackets. Or here, like it was a blazer and then they cut it up. Or a dress that was okay and then they just cut it up. So something that was previously done, like this white shirt, but then made into something else. Here in Rock, I love Rock. Okay, oh my gosh, Rock it oh my gosh okay so look at these these look like there were blazers and maybe somebody cut something out even like the stitches look as if something hasn't been finished even we also have this in so many different shows and really different takes on this deconstructed trend as well we have maybe like unfinished hemlines with strings off of them maybe it looked like something that hasn't been completed or like a sweater that's not knitted fully we also have an acne studios like holes in a blazer as if just somebody just cut out a hole and here it is this takes us into grunge something very distressed even something that looks very worn something is just not i, I don't want to say the best looking because you know beauty is in the eye of the beholder but something that you wouldn't think that this was new <laughs> something that was destroyed by something else something that uh, it's definitely a statement and we do have also makeup trend and accessory trends with this grungy theme of maybe spikes or maybe the eyes being like really messy and almost like drying eyes if you know what I mean with a mascara. In Diesel there was so many different textures in this scenario that it was crazy. We also have like this off weird painted clothing as if it was painted but then it was like folded weirdly or maybe it's like crunchy. Balenciaga had this dress made out of like bags. I am all for repurposing so this might be an interesting thing to do to try out but buying something new like this I don't know. I don't think I would. This Now this reminds me of the time where the huge holes on pants was popular and I guess it's returning. Another one here uh, you can see are like very crumpled up things. I guess it could be part of grunge movement as well. Something that is not considered beautiful by everybody and quite messy, but it's there. We see this in a variety of shows, like in Versace show, uh, there's lots of texture like this, J.W. Anderson. We also have Prada show where they had even like crumbled up uh, bags as well, dresses made to look like they are not ironed, like really not ironed. <laughs> also sweaters with the same, like really as if somebody sat in, in it for an hour. Final trend that is just so outrageous that I just, yeah, it had to be the last one. We have chaps as pants is suspended and not quite a pant. It doesn't even have to be a pant, it could be a skirt like Burberry has presented to us of having a skirt being attached to, I don't know, is it underwear? Is it like, is there like a garter belt there holding it and like having underwear there? Courageous also having that, like going from a mini skirt into a denim leg. Dolce Gabbana having boots that are strapped to the belt. Um, we also have this in Gucci of having like a regular suit, nothing special, and then it opens up a little bit and you can see that 
those pant legs are on suspenders. This is such a crazy trend. I don't know if, how we could ever introduce this into our outfits. Maybe this is the only way right here in mush. But here we are, you guys. This is the end. Thank you very much for watching. This was a major ride. If you would like to check out some more videos on maybe like shoe trends, back trends, they'll all be listed down below. But right now, as it's all fresh in your head, write down on the comments below which you thought was the craziest trend so far. If you're one of those people who always writes so nothing new, the chaps, like the chaps, <laughs> who is gonna wear that? Anyways, maybe me. <laughs> I'm always passionate about something that I don't like and then after a few months or a year I end up getting it. But I just cannot imagine myself wearing a pair of chaps. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider to like it. Maybe leave me a nice little comment. And if you're not already, subscribe. That would be amazing. If you're curious to see of my personal style and how I interpret all the trends into my everyday outfits, then I encourage you to check out my Instagram page right here. If you know somebody who would love to see this video, please share as this is the only way I could grow and I want to grow. <laughs> Once again, thank you so much for watching to the end. I really appreciate you and yeah, stay classy. Bye.